Your coaching career has advanced pretty quickly. You've moved through five different schools, five different positions over the last five years, coming in now at Texas, a wide receivers coach, passing game coordinator. What's been the key to your success in moving up in the business so quickly? I think the key to anyone's success is the people that are around them. I've been very fortunate to be around really, really good people, not, from, not only from the standpoint of X's and O's and having a lot of success at the, the places that we've been um, and the people that I've had the pleasure of being around, but really good people, I think, in terms of doing things the right way, teaching me what coaching really is, that it's not just yelling at kids, and what does teaching mean? What is coaching? Coaching is teaching and teaching them a lot like uh, a father would, I don't have any kids, but uh, imagining what a father would do on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel like is what I do now, and that's the only way to do it. And so I think for the key to anyone's success, like I said, is being around great people that are willing to teach you and invest in you, which takes time out of their schedule. Um, it does, but I've had some people that have really, really spent time and invested in me and taught me the right way of doing things. And for that, I'm forever indebted to most of the people that are in this building. And one of the people you learned from, Urban Meyer, you were a graduate assistant under him for a number of years. And he said something interesting. He said, I trusted Drew with more stuff than I've ever trusted another young person with when you were a GA there. What type of relationship did you have with Urban Meyer? Coach Meyer trusts production. And if you can come in and you are bright eyed, eager, know your role, fall in line and when stuff needs to get done it's done you can think ahead and provide good quality work for him i think that at that point you can he's willing to invest his limited time much like coach herman's is his limited time in teaching you and investing you because it is then worthwhile so uh, i was just a young coach i didn't know any better i knew that it was fourth and one every day and if anything that i learned there there's a lot of great football stuff but he taught coaches how to teach and what that meant and how that is manifested in a meeting to a walkthrough on the field. There's a, there's a process that that happens and how that happens over time. And that's stuck with me forever. And I will never forget it. How similar are Coach Herman and Coach Meyer? Eerily? Um, yeah, very, very similar. I think if they took a personality test, they would probably end up very close on the spectrum, whichever quadrant you wanted to be in. Coach Meyer's a little bit more reserved than Coach Herman, the, that little minute personality difference, but uh, I think willing to commit to whatever it takes to be successful, they are both very, very eager and willing to do, and that's been evident in their track records as head coaches. What was your first impression of Tom Herman? My first impression of Tom Herman, I walked into his office Right after my knee surgery, we just, they, he had just been in there and he was kind of watching film uh, in the offensive staff room there at Rice. And I was like, hey, my name is Drew Maringer. You don't know me. You didn't recruit me, rightfully so. But I just got hurt. They're telling me I got to do something to keep this scholarship. Can I work for you instead? Is this a thing? Like, I don't know how any of this works. And we only had one GA at the time and it was Derek Wareheim. And he was like, we need some help. Can you be here from these hours? And everything else in your life kind of stops around, except for football. And I was like, yeah, can I be in quarterback meetings still? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So he was a guy that, uh, he was a very fun loving guy. He likes to make jokes. He's a great movie quoter, stuff like that. So he, uh, I think that's a little bit of the lighthearted side of him that provides the, I think necessary not comic relief, but uh, relief from the day-to-day fourth-and-one feeling that happens, which creates a really, really good balance, I think, in our offense even to this day. You were offensive coordinator last year for Rutgers. What was the biggest thing you learned looking back on that one season? From that standpoint, the biggest thing that I learned is that leadership is the ultimate driving factor for success. And when you look at yourself in the mirror and you see the success or lack of success that you had or did not have, uh, there's only one place that you can look and there's no finger pointing, there's thumb pointing. And that has to be prominent through everybody in, in the program. It's, there's a great book called Extreme Ownership and the two guys that wrote the book, former Navy SEALs, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. It's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate 
uh, from a leadership standpoint, and it's nobody else's fault other than the leader. It's leadership drives production, and I learned a lot about myself as a as a leader and what I needed to improve on. Some would say, why go from the, being the sole play caller, offensive coordinator at a Power Five school, to a job as a wide receivers coach, passing game coordinator at another school? I'm from the state of Texas. I mean, that that part is is an easy one. And growing up, and you watch this place. Texas A&M were rolling and Texas was rolling, um, playing Oklahoma and the Red River rivalry. All that stuff was awesome. And, and being around this, this university, uh, the flagship university of the state of Texas, I, I couldn't have asked for a better place to be. I think more importantly though, uh, I wanted to be around really, really good people. And the people that are in this building that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis are, is the main reason that I'm here. This group of people has got something really, really special and they've made me a better football coach, but a better person, and hopefully preparing one day to be a better husband, better father. So uh, I think from that standpoint, I, there was no way I could pass up that opportunity. I know as passing game coordinator, you're in charge of the passing game, but specifically, what will that entail? How much does that bleed into play calling? Can you describe that role? My job is not the play caller. That's, that's Coach Beck, and we're really excited to have him. He's, he's going to do a great job. My, my role as passing game coordinator is to find issues and find new creative ways that we can enhance our passing game, They'll bring those to the table, um, and for guys like Coach Beck and Coach Herman to say, hey, I think this fits, we should invest in that, um, or no, this doesn't fit, to also keep it from the passing game from expanding too much. I don't know that we can get that answered this way that we already have. That's, that's my role. Uh, you think of more of as a, um, a management uh, of that aspect of our offense where Coach Beck can keep a big picture perspective of what's going on, how all the run game and the passing game fit together, um, and where we need to improve what we lack. Uh, and my job is to help create solutions and answers uh, and multiple ones so that we have the best combination of all things considered going into a game. And finally, what are your goals for your passing game and your group of wide receivers this spring? For the spring, I think that we have to, we have to find mental toughness and discipline. If there's anything that we're going to learn before uh, the season hits, we're going to find out who we are as, as people like deep down inside. So when it comes fourth and one or fourth and seven and we got to throw the football to go win a football game or extend a drive to go win a football game, we're going to know what we can call and who that ball is going to go to. And we have to become a football team that's built on toughness, and specifically for my unit, uh, they have to be that as well. A lot of times those guys out wide get pegged for, and rightfully so, to be honest with you, for being soft and pretty, and uh, it's not who we want to be. We want to be a tough physical unit, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get that taught this spring.